then we'll be solving difference equations but we'll be finding the particular solution and this will be the particular solution to homogeneous ODE so ODE stands for ordinary difference equations so the first example that we're going to look at or the example we should look at in this video will be y sub k plus 2 minus 7 y sub k plus 1 plus 10 y sub k is equal to 0. Given that y sub 0 is equal to 0 and y sub 1 is equal to 3. So this is how I always wanted to start. First of all, what is your order? The order is the highest subscript in this case is going to be k plus 2 minus the lowest subscript which is going to be k. So the order is going to be k plus 2 minus k which is equal to 2. Well, what does this mean? This means that our general solution or our complementary function must have two terms. Okay. So now, what is the homogeneity of this thing? Is it homogeneous or not? Well, look at f of k. The function on the right hand side is zero. Therefore, it's homogeneous. Is it linear or not? Well, look at the dependent variables. This one is over here. Do you have any two of those multiplied together or do you have any term that is raised to a power it turns out no therefore it is linear because they all have a power of one so let's get to this difference equation here so y sub k plus 2 minus 7 y sub k plus 1 plus 10 y sub k is equal to zero. So we'll come back to these initial conditions. So these are called initial conditions. They are the ones which will help us to solve our constants. So we'll just carry on the way we we're finding the complementary function in the previous lessons. First of all, assume a trial solution y sub k to be a multiplied by lambda to the power of k. By the way, you can always choose your constant. So instead of choosing a, you can also choose b you can choose c you can choose z you can choose f anything should be fine and then y sub k plus one i'll replace k in this term with k plus one then i'm going to have a lambda to the power of k lambda to the power of one and for y k plus two i'm going to replace the k in here with k plus two then i'll have a lambda to the power of k plus two which is a lambda k lambda squared and I'll take these terms and I put them in here respectively. If I do that, I'm going to have a lambda k lambda squared minus 7 a lambda k lambda to the power of 1 plus 10 a lambda to the power of k and is equal to 0. I have a common factor of a lambda k. If I pull it out, I'm going to have a lambda to the power of k multiplied by lambda squared minus 7 lambda plus 10 is equal to 0. So let's see what we get there. So this here must not be equal to 0. So a lambda to the power of k mustn't be 0 because this is what our solution should look like. So we're looking for a non trivial solution. This means that the only thing that can be zero must be this bracket over here. Lambda squared minus seven lambda plus 10 equal to zero. Now can you factorize this? Well, let's see. Look for two factors of 10, which when you multiply them, they give you 10. When you add them or when you subtract them, they give you negative seven. What are those? It turns out that it's negative five and negative two, right? So negative 5 multiplied by negative 2 is positive 10. 
but negative 5 plus a negative 2 is negative 7. And I've got an, a, a positive sign here. It means that my sign must be the same. Positive, positive, or negative, negative. So I check this one for me to see which one am I taking. Since it's negative, then I'll check this combination. Therefore, when I factorize, I'm going to have lambda minus, and then this side I'm going to have lambda minus as well, and equal to zero. But we know that it's minus five and minus two, so I'm just going to put here. Here is my minus five, and this is my minus two. So, if we solve this, I'm going to have lambda one is equal to five, or lambda two is equal to two. My complementary function is going to be a lambda 1 to the power of k plus a lambda 2 to the power of k. So I'm going to replace my lambda 1 in here and my lambda 2 in here. Therefore, finally, my complementary function y subscript c is equal to a multiplied by 5 to the power of k plus this should be b multiplied by 2 to the power of k. And this here is my complementary function. Or general solution. It's general, right? It works for any constant. That's how you call it general solution. Now, let's find the particular solution. So if we're given different initial conditions will give us different particular solutions. But in this case, they say to us, when k is zero, then the expression overall equate to zero. And then when y sub one is equal to three. But we know that we've got y sub, y sub k, right? So what this is saying is that when k is zero, when k is equal to zero, y sub c is equal to zero. And when k is equal to one, y sub c is equal to three. So I'm going to start with my first condition. So for, for y sub zero equal to zero, we know that when k is equal to zero, y c is equal to zero. So why I see my yc was given to be a 5 to the power of k plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of k. So yc sub c, I'm going to put 0. When I see k, I'm going to put 0. If I do that, I'm going to have 0 is equal to 5a multiplied by 5 to the power of 0 plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of 0. If I do that, I'm going to have 0 is equal to any number to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this is going to be a multiplied by 1 plus b multiplied by 1. So this is equal to a plus b. So what does it mean? It means that a is equal to negative b. And this will be my first equation. Now, writing my complementary function, I'm going to now put the second initial condition that says when k is 1, y sub c is equal to 3. Well, it says y1 is equal to 3, right? So this means that when k is equal to 1, y sub c is equal to 3. So when I see y sub 3, y sub c, I'm going to put 3. And when I see when I see k, I'm going to put 1. If I do that, I'm going to have 3 is equal to a multiplied by 5 to the power of 1 plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of 1. 3 is equal to 5a plus 2b. And this is my second equation. Now I've got two unknowns and two equations. I'm going to solve them simultaneously. Well, I know that a is equal to negative b. So it means that in this formula here, or this equation, where I see a, I can replace it with negative b. If I do that, I'll say replace a in equation 2 with negative b. Right, so 3 is equal to 5 multiplied by negative b plus 2b. 
This means that 3 equal to negative 5b plus 2b. 3 equal to negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So if I divide both sides by negative 3, we get that our b is equal to negative y. So a is negative b, right? Now if b is negative 1, but we said that a is negative b, this means that a is negative of negative 1, which is equal to 1. Now I've got the value of a equal to 1 and b equal to 1. And when we did our complementary function, we said y sub c equal to a multiplied by 5 to the power of k, right, plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of k. So if I put a to be 1 and I put the b to be negative 1, the answer is going to be 5 to the power of k minus 2 to the power of k. Now, since I've now solved for the constants, it's no longer called a complementary function. It's now called a particular solution. So I now replace the C with the P to show that this is my particular solution. So different initial conditions will give you different um, particular solutions. So this is how you can use initial conditions to find the particular solution to a recurrence relation. Thank you for watching.